just went off and I was like I gotta come on and just get this video done okay I can't hold it any longer <laughs> let's get the video done so here we are to talk about D-Day with our couples so as we know the experiment usually goes eight weeks because of the pandemic it's gone a full four months so the couple has had um, the longest time ever in this experiment and we're finally able to see what they have decided so first things first Dr. Viviana, she did not come to play. She came to slay, okay? She looked amazing. Oh my God, which I'm not shocking because she always looks, you know, bad, but she looked bad. Go ahead, Dr. Viviana. Um, so first up with our couples, we have Amelia and Bennett, which I felt like was the given because we knew they were going to stay together. So it was like an easy ease into this whole decision day for all the couples. So Bennett is back with his hat that, you know, the hat that he wanted to wear to the wedding with the elephants on it. He's back with that. He has a pair of little yellow capris on, you know, typical Bennett outfit. Um, so as they share all the couples, they do a little montage of all their time together. And um, each of them kind of narrate how they feel about the other person. So in this little montage of videos with Bennett and Amelia, they just say really, really sweet things about each other. He says all these sweet things about her. Um, and then they meet up with the experts to finally share, you know, how things have been going and what they have decided. Um, they say that they were just um, so lucky to be matched up with somebody during such a rough time because they did bring up the pandemic and how, you know, that may have had an effect on their um, marriage. And Bennett turns to Amelia and he says such sweet things to her, telling her, you know, this is his first real romantic relationship. Um, he feels really safe with her. It was just so sweet oh my gosh um and then he says that he has a surprise for her so all of the experts are like what is going on because he turns to act like he's like unbuttoning his pants and we're like bennett what are you doing we know you're goofy but what are you doing <laughs> so of course it breaks the commercial and then when it comes back um we see that he's still trying and then he stands up and he shows amelia that he got her initials tattooed on his bum <laughs> Yes, right on his bum. So that basically tells us what his decision was, that he wanted to go ahead and stay married. Um, and then, of course, when they go to ask Amelia, she says that she just loves him a lot. And now that he has her initials tattooed on his butt, how can she not stay married to him? Like, oh, come on. So, of course, the given couple, we knew they were going to stay married. So, easiest couple first. Next up, we see Olivia and Brent. Um, we already know they don't stay together. So basically, this meeting is about them asking some questions and finding some answers with the two of them. So they go through their little montage of videos. Um, and their commentary is much different from what we just heard from Olivia and Bennett. Um, we have to witness all these cringeworthy moments again with them two kind of bickering back, bickering back and forth with each other that I could just really do without. Um, but here we are again, Olivia walks in the room <laughs> and she did not come to play either, okay? She came super cute in her little dress and I'm like, there you go, Olivia, show him what he is missing, okay? Okay? So she did that. She looked amazing. And then when she does come in, Brett gives her a hug and says, hey, hun. And I immediately am like, hey, hun, y'all have already decided you're not going to stay together. Why are you... <laughs> Why are you talking to her like that, Brent? <laughs> Whatever. Um, so they share that Brent has texted her every now and then. Um, and Olivia is pretty much, you know, stone-faced, shut down. And we can pretty much tell that from the moment that she walked in, she was not here for the BS with Brent. Um, and basically, Brent comes off as, even in this situation where we've seen all this stuff, he comes off as the type of guy that still thinks he can say, like, fun and sweet things to you and then he expects the girl to just right melt back into him and he just kind of have the upper hand again and yeah Olivia was like nah dog that ain't going down today not today <laughs> um but the experts noticed pretty much right off the bat especially Pastor Cal that um Olivia came in they came in basically really with different um emotions and feelings Olivia felt very cold 
and Brent kind of felt very open and lighthearted about the situation. Um, and basically, Olivia um, agrees and she says that, you know, it just feels like the, the same old thing with him. Like, he's had all this time to try to get to know her and then after they decide they weren't going to stay together, he wants to, you know, send her text messages and even her coming in to him saying, hey, hun, like, what is all that about? And I felt the same way, like, that is just... That's weird. I don't know. And then Pastor Cal does call her out and say that he feels like um, no matter what Brent says, um, it's just not going to make her happy. Like, it's not going to be enough. And she does agree. And then um, he says it again. And she's like, yeah, and I agree. Like, he can say whatever he wants at this point, but his behavior has shown otherwise that it doesn't matter what it exactly comes out of his mouth <laughs> at this point. And that's where I was at with Brent, and I feel like that's where Olivia was at with him as well. It's just like, dude, just you've shown me not enough of your genuine side, and you've shown me too much of the sarcastic side that all I really have to go off is the sarcasm because the rest of it is just like whatever i'm not falling for it um he olivia does say that um his sarcasm was a turn off so that's why it was hard for her to really get emotionally and physically intimate with him and he says that that would have been helpful um if she kind of explained that stuff to him before so they basically try to say there's a bunch of miscommunication the experts even kind of bring that up with them as well um, and I'm confused because I'm like, maybe she didn't say it in that stance of your sarcasm just doesn't, you know, turn me on or it just, you know, makes it so that I, I can't even be physically or emotionally intimate with you. But she has told you that your mouth is a problem. <laughs> like, let's not act like you hearing this is like such a revelation and you did not know this about her. She told you about that dude. Cut it out. <laughs> Um, but then he says he still wants to be friends with her. And I'm like, again, your personality even isn't even a, the personality as such that she would want to be your friend. Like, it's not just like you guys did not work out romantically. I don't think she likes you as who you are, which if I don't like you in that face, I don't want you to be my friend either. Um, but as he's walking, basically as they show them kind of walking out the door separately, um, he says that... He feels like she won't um, probably basically come around to even being the friend because she is stubborn. And I was like, <laughs> did I hear that correctly? Brent's calling somebody else stubborn. Pot, me kettle. <laughs> Boy, bye. Anyway, next up we have Karen and Miles, which this was the couple probably I was most excited to see because this one I was really on the fence of with everybody else I knew what they were going to say them I was not sure what they were going to say so this was really exciting I was really come ready to see them but again with the looks Karen or Miles did not come to play with the looks like Miles was looking all dapper in his suit Karen that wrap dress off the shoulder situation the hair looked amazing too bad she got on my nerves all season but you look fabulous girl you looked good <laughs> so during their little video montage um she just she makes it seem like everything has been going really good with them and it's been all you know flowers and cupcakes and rainbows um she even says that she loves his hugs and it makes her feel safe and i was just like would you watch it did you watch what we watch I know you lived it, but did you watch what we watched? <laughs> okay. Um, Miles, of course, shares how much he cared for her. Um, and then, of course, we have to see the replay of their cringeworthy videos of when he wanted affection or when she would say these smart things about him. And I was like, oh, we could really do without this, guys. We really could, but I, I, I get it. We got to go through the motions. Um, so plus Pastor Cal does ask about their emotional and physical intimacy, and Miles shares that after about five or six weeks into the marriage, he wasn't sure if he was going to push through because of the lack of intimacy. Like he said, it finally had gotten to him. And I wish he, Karen kind of looked a little bit shocked, uh, although I don't know why. But I, for one, think she needed to hear that. And for two, I wish he would have said that when he was at week four or five or six, when he really felt like that. Like I think she needed to hear that a little bit earlier 
on, even though with Karen, it's like a gut punch. Like, I don't care when you're going to give it to her, just give it to her. <laughs> but I think it would have been more helpful to say it early on. Um, then we could have kind of gotten that all out the way, but whatever. Karen says that her physical intimacy is led by emotional intimacy and it's hard for her to feel like she wants to hug or kiss him, which I was like, ouch, uh, okay. So basically you didn't even want to touch him. So the emotional intimacy wasn't even crossing a barrier. So the physical intimacy, not even an option. Got it, girl. But we all know what Karen, she basically wants a man to call her out her name and put her in her place and she'll love you forever and ever and ever um miles goes first and when they ask him what his decision is and he says he wants to basically keep trying because what they've seen from the last three to four weeks they've kind of seen a different side of each other and they want to keep working on it so he says yes and i instantly get angry with him why are you staying married to carrie she don't deserve you mm, mm -mm. she not gonna ever meet you where you need her to meet you i just do not foresee it happening because she is too emotionally like cut off and what he really needs of that physical touch is like one of his top things and i just if it ever happens it's going to be years before she's ever able to meet him there so i was angry but whatever um and i immediately said well okay he said yes, Karen going to say no, so they're not going to be together anyway. And then Karen comes around and says she wants to stay married. And I'm like, girl, what? <laughs> you want to stay? You want to stay married? I really need to know what happened in these past three to four weeks that maybe we didn't see that really turned the curve for them because that seemed like that was a turning point. And I don't get it. I don't know what happened. I don't see it. But obviously, that was a turning point for them, and they both decide to stay married. But I'm so confused, even as they get up and hug and get ready to do their toast with the experts. Karen, even in that moment, still looks like she doesn't even want to touch him. So why are you going to stay married to him? Okay. All right, y'all. Fourth up, we got Christina and Henry, so let's get the fun started. <laughs> we hear Christina narrate the little video montage of them first. And I'm like, what the hell is she even talking about? But okay, other thing is going to be Cupcake and Roses over there with you two. All right. Then we see Henry. He starts his little narrative. And after about 60 seconds in, <laughs> he brings out Christina's other side. <laughs> and they mostly show all of her cringeworthy moments of her getting smart with production, her getting smart with him, um, him calling her out on being a liar about where she lived and all this good stuff. So it's great. Her tears are getting ready they prepping themselves in the background so they can be ready to fall on command with her. I can see it already. So Henry walks in the door saying he know what his decision is going to be. He just don't know where this conversation is going to go. <laughs> Christina, I don't like you, girl, but you came in there looking amazing. Like all the women was like, you ain't going to catch me slipping today. We've been in quarantine. I ain't had time to dress up and really go nowhere. And today I got the opportunity to do so. I'm going to be looking fly. Okay okay <laughs> so she looked did good all right um christina does say that she says they wish they would have existed better together and then when the experts ask her you know well what does that really mean she talks about of course the lack of intimacy and then she says that she never really felt wanted by him um and i believe it's because he didn't want her like since the honeymoon when he got the bad vibe bad vibes from her about being rude to production that was his turn off and we all know once somebody gets turned off it's that much harder to build them back up to where you need them to be at so i'm pretty sure that was just like hitting rock bottom and then they never were able to really climb out of that um henry then brings up the text message of christina accusing him of being in a relationship with a man and yeah she just looked shocked like <sighs> I, I never said that. How dare you bring that up? Who sent that? Me? I didn't say that. We never talked. Like, she immediately has this look of <gasps> on her face. And I'm like, yeah, you weren't expecting Henry to call you out in front of the experts, huh? <laughs> she was just ready to pour out these excuses. And Henry was like, cut the BS, Christina. We ain't here for it no more. So here's what it is. You told me about this. You basically tried to 
low-key blackmail me a little bit about this situation and she tries to act like this was like never her intention she never made it up she never even believed it she got it from some random text number and she thought it was one of her friends playing the trick on her i'm like we don't believe it girl we believe henry stop it you just making yourself look foolish we don't believe you henry is the more reliable source in this relationship <laughs> So after that, she apologizes because the experts then asked, you know, have either, either of them apologized for how they made the other one feel. Um, so then she apologized for, apologized for how she handled the situation and said she could have handled it better. Um, he apologizes for the lack of communication and not making her feel wanted. But again, we all know these apologies are basically kind of forced because the experts brought it up. And I think if they didn't bring it up, they would have never apologized to each other. Um... When they ask first um, what they want to do, if they want to stay married, um, Henry says, of course, he wants to get a divorce. Um, Christina then is a little bit, you know, misty-eyed, and she says that she'll think they'll be doing each other a disservice as, as they stay together. Um, so, basically, um, she then says that they show a clip of her after, I guess, post-decision day, um, and she says that she wished Henry, wished Henry would have told her some of this stuff before decision day. I'm like, why? Because you could have gotten your lives together? Basically, if you would have known ahead of time, uh, no. Everything that that Henry said, we all as viewers knew. So if we all knew, I don't understand how you didn't know, girl. You just really, like Henry said, you live in two different realities from the rest of us. Girl, go get some counseling. Go get some real friends. Find somewhere to live. And then find you a husband. All right. Last up, we get our favorite couple, Woody and Imani. And I just want them to just cut to the decision of these two because that's all we really want to know. Oh, Monty, that one shoulder dress, the hair, sweets looked amazing. Oh, my gosh. Um, Woody, he was ready to stunt his little white jacket and pinky ring. We see you, Woody. I'll be honest, while their video was playing, I wasn't really paying attention. I was just so engulfed in their, you know, video, their this little montage of their relationship. I was just all in my feelings, okay? So I didn't take no notes. <laughs> um, but Woody shares how he looks at love differently once they do get together with the experts. Um, and, of course, he, he dotes on Imani because she looks so fabulous. But they ask him about love, and he says he looks at it differently. Love for him now means safety and security. And Imani basically says she she knows what unconditional love is and she loves him unconditionally. And Dr. Viviana, she starts the waterwork of tears. She starts crying. Um, and then as they continue to talk, Woody says that being married to Imani has, he's got everything he did not expect it. And he just pours his heart out and he starts to cry. And I'm like, y'all really tested my gangster. Y'all want me to cry? Y'all really want me to cry? Um, so as he begins to shed tears, basically the other two experts start sh shedding tears. Amani comes closer to him, um, and then she moves back to her side, and she starts sharing a little bit. And as she's saying sweet things about him, she's trying to keep it light and funny because she starts getting emotional and starts crying. So basically everybody in the room crying at this point. <laughs> so, like, there's no way either one of y'all is going to say no. I mean, we got everybody in this room in tears, basically, of how sweet... You guys are being with each other in this moment. They have just, just to see the change in the both of them and to see them grow in love has just been so sweet. Black love. I love to see it. So Woody calls her by her full name and says he wants to stay married with to her. And Amani plays a trick for about 2.5 seconds and says she wants to get a divorce. We don't believe it. And then she says she wants to stay married. Of course, we knew you guys were going to stay married. Um, so as the episode starts to wrap up we see all the couples get together for one last time so that they can kind of see what everyone's decision was and what the next steps are going to be so of course Woody and Imani share that um they, they decided to stay married next steps for them are going to get a house kids and a dog and maybe the next year and a half or two years um Karen and Mouse they stay together and share that and say that they don't know what the next steps are going to be they just happen to have made it this far <laughs> okay um, Amelia and Bennett share that Bennett got the tattoo um, of her initials, so of course they're going to stay together. Obviously, Brett and Olivia share that they will be going their separate ways and that they've, um, they've learned a much about each other, but yet we see them in this instance still kind of throwing shots at each other, and it just gives me a strong eye roll that I'm just over the two of them at this point. 
Um, and then Henry and Christina basically say the same thing. They decided to not stay together, but they're thankful for what they've learned and the new friends that they have now. Um, we see them all decorate Bennett and Amelia's car so that they can send them off because we know that from decision day, Amelia and Bennett said that they had to leave the very next day to go to Virginia so that she could start her residency. So they show them off by writing all these kind words on their car and decorating the car. And Bennett gets to show us his new flip phone that he got. <laughs> oh, snap. Go, Bennett. <laughs> So, y'all, that's it. That was this, the finale episode of Married at First Sight. So, three of the five couples made it. I pretty much had a shoe in for the two. Karen and Miles was the little wrench in there that I wasn't sure about. I did not know what they were going to do, and I still don't think they're going to make it long term. Because, again, I don't think Karen's going to be emotionally available enough to meet all of his needs. Um, so, I need a reunion ASAP. I can't wait. Looks like next week. Um, they will do some type of Skype, Zoom video conference where they can kind of catch up with the couples to see where they are now. So I'm excited to see that. If any of y'all know these people IG handles, leave them below so that we can go and be nosy and see what they're up to. Um, since they probably have finally opened up their IGs to be in public now. So y'all yeah, drop it below so we can go talk. And then um, I'm just excited The reviewing this show has been different for my channel, but it's been nice because I've literally watched this show from season one and many people didn't watch it. So I really didn't have a ton of people to talk to about this show. So it's been nice reviewing it with you guys. Um, looks like we have a new season coming in January. So of course I am not a review channel. But I think we're going to keep this Married at First Sight in rotation because I enjoyed it. <laughs> so we'll be back when we have new city, new couples, and a new episode coming in January. So I'm excited to review it then. But until then, we have the finale and we have hopefully the reunion next week to get us through the next couple months. Alright, let me know below what y'all thought about Decision Day. And I guess we'll chat one more time next week, right? Alright, catch y'all then.